A customer calls. She visited the web shop and wants to know more about the red wine. Mr. Gennaro answers that the wine has a round taste and comes in a 1 liter bottle. After the call, he realizes that this information should be added to the website. He calls Georgie and asks if it's possible to create a page with the product details. The details page should show the name, description, volume and price. He will send Georgie the information per email. You already know what a hyperlink is. It is a link to a resource on the internet. Here you see a hyperlink to a contact page. When you click on the hyperlink, the browser loads a new resource. The address of this resource is stored in the hyperlink. We call this address a URL. Here you see an example URL. This URL has no parameters. It targets the contact page, but does not send extra information to the contact page. The contact page will be the same every time when it is requested. Now look at this list of products. When we click on one of them, the product details page should be loaded. But there is only one product details page. How does the page know what product to show? For this we add the product ID to the URL. But you do not have to do this manually. Django has a nice system to do it for us. I will create everything needed step by step and start by duplicating the index template. I switch back to the code and duplicate the index template. I replace the loop with the text product details. The product detail page needs a view. I duplicate the index view. I rename the class to product details view. And the template name to product details.html. At this moment, I'm not going to show any product details. I first want to get the linking and routing working. That should work. Now I create a route for this view. I import the view. Now adding products to the URL should open the new page. Let me try that. I start the local web server. Yes. The product details page is shown. Let me show you again what Mr. Gennaro asked. He wants the name of the product, a product description, a volume, and the price. To add the description and the volume, we have to make changes to the database. As you have learned, the central point to do this are the models. Here is the current product model. I will add two char fields for description and the volume. I open models.py and add the new attributes. I switch to the terminal and quit the server. I create the database migrations. Changing a table that already contains data is tricky. By default, char fields are non-nullable and require a value. To change the table, we have to provide a default value for
for description and volume for the already existing products. I choose one and enter an empty string for the description. And do the same for the volume. I apply the changes to the database. And start the server again. Let's open the admin module in the browser. Click on the products table and choose water. As you see, the volume and description can now be entered. Let's check if we have the missing information in the email. Mr. Gennaro sent a list with all the information. Enter the information in the admin module. Now that all the information is in the database, it is time to create a hyperlink. What is in the hyperlink? There is the page and the product ID. Here you see the URLs for the current four products in our database. I will now show how to create these links in the index template. The first thing we need to do is add the product ID to the context in the view. I open the index template and convert the product name to a hyperlink. For this, I'm going to use Django's URL tag like this. Let me save this and view it in the browser. I see the hyperlinks. Let me click on the first one. The browser navigates to the product details page. But how did Django know what URL to load? The trick is in the product's parameter in the URL tag. Django looks in the list of URL patterns for a route with name products and found it. It then takes the path and uses it in the hyperlink. A huge benefit of this approach is that there is only one place to manage the paths. If you change the path here, the templates automatically create the correct hyperlinks. The product page can now be opened, but the URL does not expose the product ID. Let's add the product ID to the hyperlink. Adding parameters to the hyperlink is as easy as typing them. Let's reload the index page. I get an error. Django warns us there is no route that handles the products link with an ID. We need to change urls.py. This route should expect an ID, which is an integer. Here is the code needed to support that. Let's reload the browser. I click the first product. Another error occurs. If you look at the URL, you see that the ID was passed correctly. Now it needs to be handled by the product details view. I add a parameter called ID to the get method and print it. I refresh the page and watch the ID in the terminal. You see that the view was able to extract the ID from the URL. It can now be used to retrieve a product from the database. This retrieves the product with the past ID. Let me fill the context with the product details we need in the template. As you see, the product name is stored in the title key. 
I do this because we are going to use the product name as the title of this page. I'll use the context in the product details template. I replace the literal text product details with the title. Before I put the rest of the details in the template, let's check if this works. That works. I finished the template. Looking good. Let's test. The details page now shows all product details from the database. To conclude this chapter, I'd like to explain how the web server and browser interact. Here is the web server. It is waiting. Here is your browser. The browser and the server are not aware of each other. Then the browser sends a request to the server. The server wakes up and sends the requested URL to the router. The router passes the URL and in this example it recognized a request for product details. The router calls the product details view and passes the ID. The view starts to collect information from the database, loads the correct template and combines everything. The result is packed in an HTTP response. And the response is sent back to the browser. The browser shows the result. The connection between the browser and server ends. And the server can go back to sleep. Isn't it remarkable that this request response mechanism is the motor of the internet? Everything from ordering food to booking a hotel online, every time when you request a URL in your browser, a cascade of functions in machines all over the world is triggered, which results in a page in the browser. Back to our shop. Look at both templates. What is most striking is that they are very similar. They share a lot of code. When more templates are added to the system, the duplicate code will grow even more. What can we do to prevent this? You will see this in the next part. Master pages.